Our next guest speaker is a role model to gamers around the world. Not just because he's made a living out of gaming. I know that's what you'd think, or for that, but he's had two children, so he's achieved the um, the sex. <laughs> Not very common amongst uh, gamers, but uh, <laughs> what, Nick, you play a lot of games, don't you? I do. You're a bit of a gamer, uh, aren't you? Uh, you no, game, a serious gamer. You, you game quite a lot. No, 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 not, not, not a serious gamer. No. What is your favourite game? What's your favourite video game? I'd have to say, at the moment, well, I haven't played GTA 5 yet. I'm hoping to get it, because I actually did, I, I did order it on Kalahari. Did you? Yeah, so it's not on way through. Orion's not actually at Kalahari anymore, you realise that. Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm sure you can still put in a good word about the Aladdin DVD. <laughs> and GTA well, 5. Yeah. So no, no, not much game. My, my favourite game growing up was Le Leisure Suit Larry. Leisure Suit Larry, I don't know if anyone knows that. You guys all know what that game is, it's very educational. <laughs> it is. It yeah, is. It I quite enjoyed the uh, Encarta. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Got encyclopedia. I remember when my school in the library they got the first computer with the DVD or CD-ROM drive. Actually, I was quite thinking to book in advance to go and uh, use a cart in the library. <sighs> now, now you can just shoot people and steal cars. It's brilliant. In games, it's great. The cart was a game, right? Yeah. Yes. The encyclopedia game. Yes. <laughs> Where in the world is in cart encyclopedia? Yes. It's very good. Anyway. Uh, from Lazy Gamer, it's Gavin Mannion, and he's our next speaker. Gavin actually went to the University of Liverpool, which is pretty impressive. I hopefully he supports Liverpool FC. Of course. Yes. He also went to Australia, didn't he? He did actually What's go to Australia. That? It's a bit of a trend, I've noticed. No. <laughs> Any uh, spider bites or I mean, <laughs> big snakes? No, it's not a euphemism. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tasty kangaroo. Yeah, you can't eat kangaroo. They eat kangaroo in Australia. No, uh, not anymore. Not since KFC worked there. Right? <laughs> kangaroo fried. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Gavin uh, actually has a master's in software engineering as well, so technically he knows what he's doing as well. He's going to be speaking about uh, how an unknown local made waves using nothing but WordPress, really. And obviously his talents and skills. But, but mainly WordPress. <laughs> Not Jim Lord. And. Uh, so would you guys uh, please give a warm welcome to the stage from uh, Lazy Gamer, Gavin Mannion. Studying, 
And at the same time, I stopped writing because I didn't need that break anymore. And now I had friends and family again. And about two days later, I got a random email in my inbox saying, why have you stopped writing? What's the problem? And that made me think that, yeah, there's actually people out there who care what I'm saying, which is very surprising, very entertaining. I was quite pleased at that. So I grabbed my email, I went to local publishers in Joburg and asked them if I can get some cash to keep doing this, because obviously I'm speaking to your clients. They gave me a tiny bit, and yeah, we kept going from there. I then had a story picked up by Kotaku. Now, Kotaku is one of the biggest gaming websites in the world. They've got something like 50 million users. It's absolutely mammoth. So when they picked up the story, not only did they kill my website, but it also gave me a bit more of an understanding how big gaming is in the world, and that it is possible to actually start making a living out of something like this. And the story they picked up was the weirdest one. There's an online game called Ebony. Now, Ebony is like a, like a Sim City, Age of Empires type thing. It's very boring, very straightforward. You grow stuff, you fight people, that's it. And the advertising started out like that, the top left. As you see, it's a, a soldier fights all the happiness. But they obviously didn't bring them enough traffic, so they started putting slightly more sexual theme to it. And I noticed it after a while, but then the, the more sites I went to, I noticed it's starting to get worse and worse. So then we went to the one on the top left, which is now really got not much to do with the game at all. But that didn't get them enough, so let's go back to what really captures your metal gamers, who don't have sex, obviously. <laughs> and then they carried on. What? <laughs> so now we've lost the little Brazil thing, and then we just got, no, let's just have boobs, we don't. <laughs> but yeah, that apparently wasn't enough for them, so they just... <laughs> this is still the same game where there are no women in the game, and you're going to be So I just thought that was the weirdest thing. That thing, that storyboard is like 300,000 hits in a week, so... It was, it was an eye-opener, even though it's completely pointless. <laughs> um, then I had a second point, which is nowhere near as entertaining. Last year I got diagnosed with scleroderma. Now, it's an autoimmune disease. If you have the worst scleroderma, which is diffuse cutanase, yeah. your five years survival rate is 70%, your 10 years, 55%. I have two little girls who last year were eight and nine years old. So the idea that I would never see my kids finish school and get married, or I had a one in two chance of that happening, made me reevaluate my life in a major way. I was spending all this time working, I wasn't seeing what they were doing, and the same as has been spoken already, you're just working your life away. You're not actually, you have an existence, you don't have a life. So from that time, after drinking myself to death for a few days, but that's really not my excuse, <laughs> we, I started looking at what we can do. Started taking some of my money, I get my full-time job, investing it back into Lazy Gamers so we can get some proper full-time staff, marketing, and trying to make a business of it, because whether it really works in the end or not isn't important. It's about enjoying the experience. And so yeah, but it's not all bad. I no longer have scleroderma. I now have Sjogren's and undifferentiated connective tissue disease, which sucks. So if you suddenly see me burst out sweating and that, it's, yes, I'm nervous, but it's just a side effect. And if I have to hold on to stuff, that's about it. But apart from that, I'm going to live 10 years at least. That's good. And then no more depressive stuff. Just happy picture. <laughs> okay, so... Um, So I wasn't sure what I needed to speak about here, so I thought I'd focus most on what we do is content creation. Um, as we got mentioned earlier, we take a lot of stories and rewrite them with bad headlines. <laughs> we try not to. The main idea is trying to make original content, but if we're going for a news website, we need to keep our guys entertained 24 hours a day, and to do that with such a limited niche market is hard. So we do do a lot of coverage of coverage. Um, the most important thing, thing for us then is your headline, but that's what gets tweeted out, that's what gets syndicated on the other sites, and for us, the story is just keep it short, pertinent, and memorable. The people, you don't want to clickbait, they need to know what they're coming in for. It needs to be short so they can remember it and it can be tweeted and works, especially we syndicate with News24, so we actually have a character limitation that we have to keep our headline in, which means for interesting days when you can't put it all in the headline. 
Um, I just always remember it doesn't tell the entire story. People will come in and they'll crap all over you because your headline was slightly misleading. It's not. There's an article. Read the damn article. Then tell me it's wrong. Um, and then make sure your content looks nice. Break it up with images. Use your blog posts, your headlines, subtext, bullet points. Don't have just a solid wall of text that will turn off any reader you're ever going to see in your life. They just can't do it. You need, they need to get the facts quickly, and if they like the facts, they'll keep digging, and they'll get all the information out of it. Um, I'm quite jealous of the print industry, mainly because they take all the money, and secondly, because you can make the design and print so much nicer than we can on the web at the moment. We're so constricted by our square blocks that it's virtually impossible to compete with how like a gaming magazine would look with the text wrapped around in that. We can do it, but the amount of time it takes to do that for one article isn't worth the payoff that we're going to get from that article. So it's a bit of a, a catch-22 that irritates me with the moment. So if there's anyone got any good ideas on how to do proper magazine print in the web, I'd be very interested. Um, the other one is for your Google love. Don't write short articles. I think I, there's a rule, I don't know the rule, so we just keep it normally about 600 words for an article. Never ever copy other people's articles. I've had a few writers who have done that and tried to get away with it. I don't understand why people did even attempt it, but a lot of people do, and a lot of people in other websites will do it. People will also try to post press releases as their articles. Don't, just don't do it. If you're going to write something, write it, make sure it's yours, and put your own spin on things. Um, a big thing if you're going to be starting a site like ours, you need to decide whether you're an unbiased news outlet, like a BBC, not a Fox News, or if you're going to be an opinion website. Now, we, we're very much an opinion. We, we tell you that we're biased. We're not biased. We'll tell you what we feel about something. We won't just report what's happening. Because if you want that, you can go to the press release and you can be happy. There's nothing wrong with it. But just make sure you know what you are before you start. And then keep down the same line. And don't ever write about things that don't interest you. Because if you're bored writing about it, they're going to be bored reading about it. And yeah, that to me is one of the most important things. Um, we're all Windows users, <laughs> so Live Writer from Microsoft is by far the best blog publishing software I've ever had in my life. It's fantastic, you can customize it with custom fields, date, time, all excerpts, all the rest of the stuff. We insist that if you're a Windows user, you have to use it if you write for us, because it saves us some, so many problems. Um, we like to know a good Mac one because our Mac lady <coughs> is struggling to find anything very good on her side. <sighs> okay, team chemistry. This one was a hard one. We've been through, oh God, I must have gone through about 20, 30 writers by now in the last two years. Because everyone thinks, yeah, you're writing for a gaming website, that's going to be fun. You play games all day and that's about it. But unfortunately, there's a hell of a lot of work when it comes to the gaming industry and writing in general. So my basic rule is you choose teammates who are entirely different to you. If everyone was like me, we'd all be writing about sports games and first-person shooters every day. And that's not what everyone else wants to read about. So before we allow someone to come in, they have to, we have to know what they what they're bringing to the table, what they're bringing that we don't already have. And for me, passion and desire mean far more to me than natural skill, by a long way. I'm generally a terrible writer, I know this. My editor knows this more than I know this. But you don't need a degree in journalism or the ability to be perfect in spelling and grammar. That's what I've got that editor for, that's what he's excellent at. But if you really, really want to do it, and you really, really want to get out there into the gaming industry, you can be taught all the boring stuff. That's fine, but you can't be taught passion. Um, we don't have an office. We've got four full-time guys now, I think. Three, three or four part-time, and then about 20 reviewers. We all live in a Skype chat. We have just a long chat that sits there all day going nuts, bounce ideas off each other. But we keep the chat so that everyone knows we're still a business, we're still working. So if you're not working, then you sign out of your Skype chat, and then you're off, that's fine. But during our working hours and when we're expected to work, it is still a work. We still run it like a business in the background, even if it is mainly funding days. And I've lost a remote. 
Another thing I learned quite quickly is don't be indispensable to the process. I used to control all the things. And they could write, and I would make sure when it goes up, what was there, how it was done. And you very quickly realize that you are then stuck. That's all you can do for your entire existence. You have to sit there writing stuff every day and making sure it all works. If I didn't have a such a great team, I'd be worried about now. We've got three major competitions going out today. The two biggest reviews of the year have just gone out in the last two days. And I'm sitting in Cape Town with my family having a holiday. For me, that's fantastic. I'm going to pay for it when I go back, because they're going to go off and take a holiday. But one of our guys left to California this morning as well, so the team's only half there at the moment. But I know it's going to be fine, because I know they've got my back. They, they know how important it is for them and for me. So building a good team is very, very important. But the other thing I did notice is, is <coughs> it's nice to hand off all the horrible work, especially if you're the boss. You make the new guys do it, and you just forget about it. But it's vital that you go back at some times and just see what you're doing or how they're doing it and what's happening. Because you can often find how, how you can fix it and make things better. Because we, we theme certain pages, we make them look nice and all this fancy stuff. And I set up, I coded all that how to do it. So I was quite impressed with myself. It was quite easy, you just go in, put your stuff in and you're done. But then when Jeff was overseas covering E3 in Los Angeles, I had to do all that stuff. And my God, it took a long time. I thought it was easy, it wasn't. It took ages and ages and ages. So again, using the coding background, I went and I found an automated way to do that. And it solves the problem. So it's always good to go back, just see that everything is still going as well as it should, because you, what you thought then might not be the best way to do things anymore. So yeah, that was a good one from my side. Um, the evolution of our design. I designed our first website, did my lab, we sat there, had a couple of beers, just making use of it. It is the ugliest thing I've seen in a long time, and I don't care. I made it all by myself, and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> you can see I did not use real Photoshop or anything, because I can't afford any of that stuff. But after we started getting bigger, I realized we need to do a little bit more, make things a little bit better. So I went out and I found a free theme, um, and then I had to direct, because as I said, I'm a C-sharp developer, I don't understand the PHP world, well I didn't. And in the end of it, I broke pretty much everything in that theme, and my WordPress site came to a grinding halt. But it didn't look that bad. <laughs> this is also around about the same time we started remembering we need to track things. So you can see we used to be 32 on Amatomu, when that was still, is it still around? I don't know. And then we put the Google Analytics in, and the all stats, and I'll get to tracking a bit later. But at the moment, we haven't done anything customized at all, really. So then I've got a new free theme, customized it more as I should. Um, it wasn't using CSS as it should, so the Wayback Wind Machine hasn't worked as well. But this is the first time I started actually getting into the nitty gritty of WordPress. Because as you can see on the left hand side, the Lazy Emma reviews, we use custom themes, now, uh, custom themes, custom fields to store, to store the score and the name, and then I can call it up in a little widget like then there's a lot more advanced now, but the basic idea, this was our first custom that we actually ever did. And you can see what the lady there, one thing we've always done, uh, we finish a day with another news and it always has a sexy model there. It's not always female, generally is because gamers are mainly male, but that's just something we do. We get a lot of abuse for it, especially from the feminist side, but we're an opinion side, we're meant to be a little bit edgy, sexy, naughty, and so it works for us. And no one's ever complained from the model's perspective. We actually have an agreement now with LW Mac, and they send us a homegrown hottie once a week. And these are South African models, they're trying to break into the industry, so they go to LW Mac and we put it up from LW Mac. So in the end, I think it works for everyone. Um, as you can see by my little picture on the right hand side, with a bag on my head. I hate being in public, you will struggle to find pictures of me anyway. Because my avatar, even today, is still not me. <laughs> and then after that, I went, I found new themes. Um, purchased one, my one's based off the delicious theme, which is actually, um, I think it's a recipe book theme. But I could see the parts that were used for me. Heavily customized it, mostly correctly, just don't let them look at my code. But it's nearly there. And that's pretty much where we're looking at now. Um, still, nothing's changed dramatically from wherever we were, we're still doing the same ideas. 
My lazy neighbor reviews are still, you can't see them, bottom right there. Still using the same custom fields as before, so it's searchable. Um, and yeah, that top block I'll get to now, now it's not, that didn't come with a delicious theme. That's most, that my main customization that I did. Um, I need to change the front page, I know that now. That thing's been there since 2012. I hate changing it because I'm not a designer. I'm really bad at it and it takes me a hell of a long time. But I've also I've paid people to change it before and it's, if I don't understand what it's doing, I end up breaking it. So I get a bit stuck where I need to get my hands in it myself and get it working. And I just need, it's one of those things I don't like in my life. I get someone to make it look nice, but I need to actually code it, otherwise I'm not going anywhere. And that goes down to never rest on your laurels. You might, we're doing well now, we're very happy. No one's complaining about our website, but that doesn't mean we can just sit there and relax because you'll turn around in another year's time and you're too far behind the curve. And we're already missing it with the, what's it, responsive design because our site does not look good on the mobile, small mobiles. So we need to sort that out. Um, what we have done in the meantime, we heavily customized the individual pages. So this is a single page article view. And we do this for all our reviews. And it's not paid for, we get no money from this, but we find it gives our reviews a better more professional look and feel to it. So every review will have the whole site takeover matching it. And all I've done with this one is I've just created a template page. So, and as soon as you click on, in the back end, the category lazy and review, it will automatically put you into this template and force you to put in your details for the header image in the background. We do a very similar thing for sponsored coverage. So now we go overseas often. And there's a bunch of gaming conventions to go to. This one was from Gamescom in Germany a little bit earlier. And Splinter Soul and Ubisoft sponsored part of it. So now every article that we wrote with the Gamescom category will automatically get the background put into it. It's a rotating background. I think we had about six or seven different ones so that you don't get the banner blindness of people. And that stays forever. So being able to sell a package like that to an Ubisoft or a distributor is a lot easier than, say, put some banners on a website. Because this, they get a lot more visual power and control over it. We work with them to make the branding. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the splinters I want, but it's what they wanted. And for me, that is, I've got to pay my guys. So, <laughs> that's where it comes from. We also do mini sites. This was from E3 earlier this year. So you go to lazym.net forward slash E3 2013. You can see PlayStation bought this coverage. And basically, it's just a mini site, it'll last there forever. No matter when you go to it, they'll always have the PlayStation branding. Every article's with PlayStation branding. Again, we've got like eight or nine different templates, so we'll rotate as it goes, just randomly. Um, and then the last thing we do, we make competition mini sites. So every time someone comes out with a good competition, we can just make a whole page. It sits inside the WordPress back end. Again, just page templates. And we don't set up competitions, but it builds really good camaraderie with us and the suppliers and distributors and makes them rather bring their special prizes to us because we're going to put the extra effort in and if we've got the good prizes, then visitors come and they take them as well. Personally, I hate competitions because people always whine when they don't win and then people whine when they don't get their prizes in time and then people lie. We've had guys say the price hasn't arrived, even though we've sent it three times and it's been signed for. So a lot of humanity is not very nice. I don't like competitions, but you have to do it. Um, I used to have a whole pile of slides about hosting, and I just actually deleted them all this morning. And you don't know how vital it is to make sure that your hoster and your host and your server are powerful enough. I don't exactly know how to tell when you need to upgrade, but basically, you'll start seeing one or two pages not loading as they should. The differences made was unbelievable. We were hitting our limit, and um, I kept asking the server guys, what's wrong with the server? They say, no, nothing, it's fine. There's no problems. And this went on for ages until I realized that they don't care or know what they're talking about. They are just putting a server there. So we paid, we doubled the power of our server, and our hits went quadrupled overnight. Because there's so many people coming from Google hitting it, getting a slow page response and disappearing. 
Um, I'm still working very hard now to get our page speed back up because we are slow. We're a very media heavy website. So we go to Google and they want their page speed wants it to load in like one second. There's no way. <laughs> we have hundreds of images. I literally can't make it load quicker yet, but we're working on it. But hosting is vital and I don't know if any of our sponsors are hosting companies, but yeah, I don't trust hosting companies. <laughs> Ask people outside of it. They they just sell whatever they want to sell. And yeah, that's the biggest thing for us. Um, ad serving, obviously we make money from our ads. We do a couple of things. We started, I made my own one because I'm a coder. That was not well done. That didn't work at all. I then installed my own version of OpenX because I wanted to control. I didn't want to outsource anything to anyone. Um, that got hacked. So then we started serving malware to everyone who came onto the website which doesn't really go down well with people, okay, enough. <laughs> so then we moved over to a hosted solution, so I outsourced to OpenX. It worked for a while, but it got slower and slower and slower, and eventually OpenX was our biggest problem, loading our website. So the latest guys we've moved to now are called AdZerk. Um, they don't offer the same advertising solutions or customization that OpenX did, but at the same time, it's a hell of a lot quicker and yeah, so we're, stuck down with, we're stuck sticking with them for now. I've tried the Google ones, but oddly enough, a lot of people use ad blocking software and every single one of them blocks Google. So just using a different ad solution, we got about 70% more impressions coming out simply because they weren't blocking that one yet. Ad blockers kill me as well. They want everything for free and we are the bastards who actually advertise to pay people. Um, As I said before, I'm a developer at heart, so I started off trying to write all the functionality I needed myself. So I didn't have to pay that 99 cents or five dollars or whatever cost saving. You have the control, but your workload suddenly becomes infinitely higher. You forget about the little things that developers do when this is their main job. So I strongly recommend the only custom development you do are things which are vital for your websites to progress. If something disappears, are you going to lose everything? Same as we heard about the resume earlier. If something suddenly breaks, have you lost a lot of your features? That's not a good thing. So then look at writing those yourself. Our critical features are Batman, Feature Matrix, and Hitcount. Batman is our in-house article tracking software that I wrote. Basically all it does is we track every hit an article gets, um, every comment it gets, and then we wrote a little algorithm that shows which authors are doing the best by comment rate and articles, uh, number of hits, and you can start seeing a trend of what people want at that time. The most recent one, for example, GTA 5. I posted a little quick article about a money cheat, and Google picked it up. We got about 80,000 hits in one day on that article. So even knowing that, all I did then is I went and wrote another couple of related articles to GTA 5 and money that people were interested in, and we got 500,000 hits in two weeks. And that's just simply following what we're seeing. Our latest one at the moment, Call of Duty Ghosts. You'll see on our Batman software it comes up. This is what it looks like on the inside. I just said Darren's currently winning there. He loves his Pokemon. So you can see he's got 27,000 page views there. My one on the GTA Online, some other one, 58,000. And then we work out a waiting. The waiting changes by the days, because even if you've got a lot of hits a week ago, it doesn't mean your new guys want to read that. And that goes back to our featured article matrix at the top. Our featured articles change on the hour, depending on how many hits the article's getting, how many comments it's getting, and it's waiting. So even though it's really big, it'll disappear off the feature bar the next day, unless it's really, really powerful, because they get divided by the days. So that helps keep us, first in the know of what's happening on the front page, and making sure that the people who hit the front page can easily see what our big stories of that time is at the moment. Um, which brings the importance of analytics. Knowing your customer reader or whatever is, very, is vital. Um, as we heard earlier, you also want to know which readers you want. Some just come in and they come for the little animated GIFs and they go. Those aren't the ones that you're going to be able to sell, they're not the ones you're going to be able to monetize. Looks good on your analytics, but it's not really your core audience. 
Um, we use Google Analytics effective measures and Batman to pull our stats. You need to combine, compare, because they are all wrong. None of them ever, ever match up. They are nowhere near some... Last month, Google Analytics said that we had 1.3 million uniques. Effective measures said that we had 700,000 effective uniques, and Batman came in around, around about a million. So those are huge disparities, and you can't trust any of them. It just gives you an, a basic understanding of where you're going with your website and your content. Um, as we heard earlier, a lot of people turn off comments. For me, it is the single most important aspect of any news site that doesn't only post hard facts. If you are just posting the facts, then I don't see any point of having comments. But if you're opinionating your facts and you're telling people how you feel and what you think about something, to then shut off your community and be able to respond to that, you're defeating the point of your opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> the readers are part of the story and they will continue to evolve the story and your reporting as you move forward. You don't know everything. You may think you know everything, but you don't. So if you write something, listen to what the community comes back with. Take the abuse because online abuse is insane. I've been called so many things and so has my mother. It's quite unbelievable. <laughs> but if you, you just need to take a step back and in there you find your golden nuggets. You find the things that make you a better writer, make you a better entertainer, which on our aspect, that's what we are. We, people aren't there to cure cancer or find out how to pass school. They're there to be entertained. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it also helps create a great community. Our guys, they have Lazy Gamer meetups every week and every month in Cape Town. I've never met any of these people, but they have these official meetups as part of our company. And that's an awesome feeling from my side. And it builds a community. They're now, we have a whole bunch of people who have found friends and everything through our website. And that's, it gives us, there's no benefit to that for us, but it's nice. And I, I like nice. So we do that. Um, to me, the difference between a journalist and a blogger is if you're writing about news and you're writing about facts and you're a journalist, there's no two ways about that. That is your job. A that's the official definition. A journalist collects, writes, and distributes news and other information. So if that's what you're doing, you're a journalist, whether the journalists like it or not. If you're writing opinions like we do, or stories, then you're a writer, an economist. You're entertaining people. We have a mix of the two. Our reviews are journalism, basically, but in fact that we're getting out and we're putting out people. Our investigative reporting of the eSports government agency is also facts and journalism. But we do the other part as well. Um, biggest thing, acknowledge your failures, celebrate your successes. Your cliche is, if you have never failed, you have never tried. A failure is just a successful way of not doing something. Um, most important thing, don't be embarrassed or afraid of failure. <coughs> Try everything, fail hard, fail fast, and move on. It does not make you a worse person, does not make you less successful than anybody else. Um, but never forget to stop and celebrate the victories. Every time we, I make little things in my head of what is important. When we broke the million mark, I had a bottle of champagne when I got home. When we broke, um, signed up with News 24, took the family out for dinner. Doesn't matter how big or small, just enjoy the fact, stop, look at what you've done, have fun, and then get back to work, because that's what it's all about. Um, last one, my critical plugins, discuss for comments, because that does all your spam control, they can move across different communities, works great. All in one SEO, because I couldn't be bothered learning about SEO myself, and that just works, done. Google Analytics dashboard, because I like to see our numbers on the page when we log in. Uh, site maps because it's good for Google News, bring you a couple of thousand hits. This one, GT Press approval. I know in WordPress you meant to post drafts, and then once you're happy, you publish them. But when we've got a team, this doesn't work. So I've got a plugin that I found, must be about five years old, GT Post approval. So you can post a live article, it won't go live until someone clicks approve. It's a little basic editing thing. It doesn't work properly. So if there's any developer here, I'll pay for something like that to work properly. Because if you post ours that build up the RSS feed but not show up on the page, it's a mess. And then W3 Total Cache or any other cache management program is vital. Um, last thing I must do, promise. Secure your top level domain. We used to be lazygamer.co.za. 
I then changed it to lazygamer.net and our Google took a plummet. We still haven't fixed from on Alexia. They still see us as two different sites with bad rankings on both. Choose your permanent instructor. I changed mine. That is the worst thing I've ever did in my entire life. I have now hacked the HD access to dev to handle the old incoming links. So they used to go four at fours and three hundreds and it's just so get that right on your first day and never change it. Your site is a brand, always mentioned in articles and discussions. You need the name, as I can't even remember the name of the website earlier. Get your name, get an easy name, and make sure it's always, always, always mentioned. Allow limited syndication, again, your branding. Get the headline out there, get a little bit of story out there, do not allow them to copy and paste your entire article because you and them will suffer from Google. Don't cheapen your brand by allowing hidden advertising and keep your integrity. Make sure everyone knows if it's an advert or not. Sponsored posts aren't the devil, but they are if they're not very, very, very clearly shown. We've only actually ever done one, because I don't like them. But just make sure that when people come to you, if you're selling, like we sell our, not sell our reviews, we are the review website, we like to think people care about that. Don't lose your integrity because you'll lose your visitors. And talk to your critics. If someone says you're an idiot, that's fine. Ask them why. Learn. Always remember you're not better than anyone else. You don't know more than anyone else. You're just lucky to be doing what you're doing. And that's it. I am done. Cool stuff. Thank you very much. I have a question. What is your preferred console of choice? <laughs> um. Obviously we've got all the consoles now. I started this generation with Xbox because it works better online and I kind of got stuck. I've just had a ton of hands on with Xbox One and PlayStation 4 last week. And I think I'm going to PlayStation 4 in the next one. But I still prefer the Xbox One controller. So I'm going to get both. <laughs> Do you, uh, anyone have a question for Gavin or about Lazy Gamer in particular? There's one at the back there. Hi Gavin, uh, James from CompassCapeTown.com. I just wanted to ask uh, who you currently hosted with and are you using a CDN? Um, we are hosting with Hetzner in Germany at the moment, purely because of the price of bandwidth. We go through about 400 gigs a month, so local hosting I just couldn't handle. We don't have an exact CDN, but I do go through Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Flare. 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 And basically they do a lot of CDNs for our images in there, but we don't have a dedicated one yet. Cool, anyone else? Don't be afraid. Thanks for the Hearthstone Meta Key today. Thanks for the Hearthstone Meta Key. Oh, did you get one? <laughs> Those things, you know, they crashed our server putting that competition up. We had 10 keys and about 400,000 Russians tried to get them. <laughs> and took down the server. <laughs> They are like gold, apparently, and I think the game sucks, so... <laughs> well, take that, Russia. <laughs> like, like Gavin, um, you've mentioned sometimes that sometimes the site has crashed uh, through sheer amount of people coming to the site. What is the post or the, or the, the article that has taken the most hit, that's, that's taken your site down, basically? The most popular article your site ever had? Um. The most popular article didn't take our site down because it happened recently with our upgraded okay. server. Sure. Um, the Ebony one was the first one that killed us. Probably because of the boobs. It is because of the boobs. There we go. It's always <laughs> because of the boobs. And then the other one recently, surprisingly, with the Hearthstone one. Just simply because those things are so valuable, apparently. That they killed us. So ba basic keys and special offers and things like that are... Pretty. Okay. Competitions, people love competitions. And if you can do it with beta keys and that, that's even better because then you don't need to post anything. It's just an email. Sure, sure. So it doesn't cost you because competitions cost us. You win this massive big prize and I've got to post that thing. <laughs> it's not cheap. <laughs> that doesn't fit in the post box. No. So it's courier, so it's a couple of hundred grand and the guy who wins is in Namibia. <laughs> I posted a mug to Canada that cost me 89 rand and it came back. <laughs> That was not happy time did, to me. Did the Canadian guy wash the mic before he sent it back? No, he emailed me pissed that he didn't pick up his mic. Unbelievable. So that's <laughs> Russia, Canada, and... Oh, no, we don't like Americans else. either. We don't take that. <laughs> we have an American working for us, and she doesn't like that. Australians we hate, sorry. Anyone know? South Africa, best country there is. Absolutely, that's why I live there. 
Nick, I think you had a question about comments. Um, yeah, interesting comments on the site. Anything? What's your what? Okay, what's been your standout comments? Because I'll tell you right now, mine on our YouTube channel has been dumbest thong on the world. <laughs> I still don't understand it, but yeah, favorite comment. Um, my favorite comment actually came from a, an irate government minister, really, because he wasn't happy how we were reporting on us. So he, he wants us to take his articles off our blob. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my favorite. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Any, any other questions out there? No. Okay, thank you very much. Round of applause. Thank you.